is well i'm going to make a video about this and i might have my fair share of critiques on this from all the pack car experts but uh i never claim to know everything there is to know about these uh, the initial video that i made when i tore this thing apart and i'll go into this in great detail It'll be a lot of discussion well not discussion i guess a lot of explaining on this of as to sequence of events and what led to one thing led to another um but anyways you know there was some comments that were pretty negative on the some guy named john doe which i excommunicated him he is banned he can make all the negative comments that he wants on the channel nobody's ever going to see it uh but anyways you know um i'm still learning on these pack cars uh they're 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 a piece of shit they are they're they're junk and you talk to all the guys up there at kenworth and they hate them they hate these things uh i just noticed that i had a red fuel he don't have red fuel in his tanks i put that in there out of my diesel bucket i was sucking out of a five gallon bucket okay so let's get into that okay so here's what happened let's go in through sequence of events here guys this truck came in uh driver showed up the owner called me this guy's got 10 or 15 trucks he says hey one of my drivers is up there he's and i know these guys because they're all kind of part of the ag community um they haul they got walking floor trailers. These guys have flatbeds they haul hay with. I mean, the, the name's hay and cat, uh, MB Hay and Cattle. But anyway, so anyway, that being said, I know these guys, and he called me and he said, Hey, man, it sings D rating or something. The stop engine lamp's coming on. Can you look at it? Well, when it first showed up, it had a it had a couple codes. A P0094 was the one that really stuck out in my mind. And uh the driver that we ended up what we did is we ended up clearing the code and i said man i was busy at the time i said i mean go drive it down the road he goes i'll tell you what he said i'll just go to tui lake and unload and then i've got to come back this way anyway and if it's screwing up i'll just stop so he didn't make it five miles down the road and it was doing the same thing after i cleared it. i said we'll come back so he came back and and uh I checked resistance on the pumping units, and I think the spec is like 0 0.97, 0 0.64 ohms to 0 0.97 ohms at certain ambient temperatures. I checked that, and one of those, the back one, was way out. It was like, I don't know, it was like 3 ohms, you know. It was out of spec, so the obvious conclusion there was, well, let's pull it out and replace it because it's obviously got high resistance on the coil. It's out of specification according to the manual. I'm just following what the manual said. So anyways, I pull it out, and that's where I found the damage pump plunger. And then, then I pulled the cam follower out, and here's the cam followers back here. Um, all the valve train cam followers were fine. It was just the pumping unit. See that chewed up, chewed up uh, cam follower there? Uh, this one, too. This one was, this is the other pumping cam follower. See how it's chewed up? So, I thought, well, that's got to be what's causing the P0094 code. Well, I don't think that's what was causing that code. So, we, fought, we pulled the cam flower out. We took a bore scope. We put it down the hole. Found the cam was screwed. Here's the cam out of it right here. You'll notice that it's flaking here on all, the, all three pumping lobes on the cam. They're flaking. So, the obvious conclusion was, you know... Pull the engine out, pull the back cover off, change the cam. Well, the owner said, you know what? It's a junkyard engine. I don't really know what I got. He said, overhaul it. So I know what I got. I said, okay. He bought this truck. It had 300,000 miles on it. I guess engine was blown up. The owner themselves down there, they pulled the pan and parts fell down in the pan when they pulled the pan off. He said, shit, throw the pan back on it, get another engine. So they bought this this engine with 300,000 miles on it, he's put about another 400 on it. It's got This engine's probably got about 700 on it. And then this happened. So anyway, I overhauled the engine, put liners, pistons, rings, rod and main bearings, um, new cam, cam bearings, um, filters, all that shit. <clears throat> get it back in there and fought it for a whole day trying to get it started. Never could get it started. 
<clears throat> never would throw any codes. Wouldn't throw any codes at all. And the only codes it was throwing was low coolant level. That's it. I even went through that, and I even put a plug in the end of this tank. I set that on the top of the valve cover, and I plugged the coolant level sensor in there and poured water in this, and then there was no codes at all in there, and it still wouldn't start. <clears throat> and what was odd about that is I could prime this up with the manual priming pump, and let's just talk about this. <clears throat> Fuel comes in from the filter, the primary filter, from the tank. You can see here, this hose is going back to the tank. This comes in through here. This is a CompuCheck fitting. You can do a, a restriction test on it. If it's pulling too much vacuum, then you know you've got either a plug filter or something restricting the flow from the tank. Anyway, <clears throat> comes in through here, right? Okay, and you'll see this line here is coming over to your priming pump. So this priming pump goes down to a banjo bolt, and your there's a gear pump, okay? So you got your air compressor, you've got your air compressor, your power steering pump, and your fuel transfer pump that piggybacks right off the back of the air compressor. Okay, so um, I actually pulled this off. I unbolted these two bolts to inspect his air compressor when I had the engine out of it because the bearings are notorious for failing on the back of the compressors and destroying the engine. Those ball bearings will fall down in the rear gear train and destroy everything. I said, let me pull, when I pull that compressor, let me tear it apart and make sure that there's no problems there. He said, yeah, do that, please. So we tore that apart. And uh, there was nothing wrong with the bearing on the back of the compressor. Anyway, um, <clears throat> here that fuel comes out of that line, out of the priming pump, and goes down. You'll see arrows on this. For for uh, You'll see an arrow pointing up. That's the discharge side of this pump. And then here's the arrow going in. That's the suction. That, that goes into that port right there. And then this port goes up and feeds that fuel filter module and fills that secondary filter up. And then there's a nipple coming out of that filter module that plugs into the block. And then it fills that gallery up with fuel from this transfer pump. So what I did notice by monitoring the data, I was cranking on that thing. And I couldn't get 6 PSI. I mean, that's that's the entire, I would start out at, at zero PSI, and I would crank on it until the hot starter thing would, these Packers will kick you out with the starter, you know, telling you to let the starter cool down. I'd crank on it till it told me to do that, and all I could get was six PSI out of that. And I said, yeah, th that's not right. I mean, <clears throat> they tell you, I mean, that's the thing was that the service manual, I looked and looked and looked last night. The only specifications that I could find was, um, uh, idle pressure off that pump because there's a pressure sensor in the in the gallery here i don't even know where it's at to be completely honest with you but there's a pressure sensor you can read that that low side pressure with and the only specifications i could ever find till my eyes almost were bleeding looking in that book was idle pressure and 1200 rpm pressure at idle i think it was like 74 psi and i talked to some guys up there at kenworth and they said no nah, if you're cranking on that thing I mean, you should see a minimum of 30 PSI. I said, shit, I can't get six out of it. And so here's the other thing. So I had the laptop sitting here on the tire, and I took this hand primer pump, and I'm sitting there watching the live data on it, and I'm pumping this primer pump. I could sit there and pump this primer pump up to almost 35 PSI. And when I let off, of course, it starts bleeding down. But cranking on it, I can't get six PSI out of it. And I know, oh, you got air in it. No, trust me, there was no air in the system. I vacuum bled it through this vacuum, to this return port. I sucked it with a 20-inch vacuum till I had clear fuel coming out of there. That priming pump was hard as a rock. I even put an electric lift pump on the CompuCheck fitting here and forced the fuel through it. And I still... So what happened is I knew that I had a fuel problem because you could squirt ether in there and it would fire up. And I know, oh, you got the thing, I don't have it out of time. <laughs> okay. Oh, you got it out of time. I don't have the son of a bitch out of time. Uh, some guy, oh, you got it 180 out on the cam. How, how would you get it out 180 on the cam? You put the crankshaft damper on TDC. There's a 1 to 6 mark, a 2 to 5 mark, and a 3 to 4 mark, and then there's a TDC mark. 
that TDC mark, you line it up on the damper, you put your that puts your crank in time, and then the cam, you, you with the cam and the idler, then you can't time your cam and your idler to the marks. It's pretty simple. Anyway, so it's not out of time. The cams are sync when you when you crank on it and you look at your cam synchronization cam synchronization, it says yes. And when you let off the key, it says no. So it's not out of time. So anyway, if it was out of time, it wouldn't start on ether. So um that being said, I pulled this I pulled this off over here because I had an ISX Cummins one time that I could not get started. And what happened on that ISX, I ended up finally, after like two days of trying to get it to start and just scratching my head going, what in the hell is going on with this son of a bitch? I, you know, them ISXs have those exhaust gas pressure sensors and stuff up over here. Well, I pulled it out because I wanted to see if it was smoking. And as soon as I pulled that out of there on that ISX, smoke started coming out of that and it started it started with that out, but if you put that back in, it wouldn't start. The VGT cone was stuck closed on the back of the turbo, and it wouldn't let the exhaust gas go back through the exhaust of the DPF, and it had it back pressured. So that damn thing uh, wouldn't, and that's where I learned too, that, 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 that Cummins, when you turn the key on, it should cycle that VGT. Well, for some reason, you couldn't, it it wouldn't cycle that VGT because it was stuck, but it wouldn't throw any codes either. I thought, so on that Cummins, we stuck another turbo on there, turned the key on, and it went clink, 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 and calibrated all that shit, you know, and it was fine. Fired right up, no problems. This one here, that's what I did, is I pulled this, this kind of EGR crossover deal here off, going to the cooler, and I thought, well, hell, the, if it's, if this VGT vein, uh, if this is balked, creating back pressure on the system, I can take this loose, and I should see smoke out of there, and it should run. Nope, I wasn't even getting smoke, nothing out of there. I had the fuel system bled. I was getting 4,700 PSI on the rail, but like I'm saying, I was. that was after I hand-primed the system and filled that gallery full of fuel, and I think the pumping units were just pumping what was in the gallery, and that's the pressure that I was seeing, that and air. So, anyway, I still couldn't get any pressure out of the low side of the system cranking on it. So I pulled that pump off of there, I put it in the vise, and I, I could sit here and fill this port up with fuel, and I've, I've done a million hydraulic pump gear pumps, and, you know, you can pour fuel in the inlet, and I could turn that, and it would never even push the fuel out the outlet, filling this port full of fuel. And I thought, another thing I did is I stuck both my fingers over it with rubber gloves on and plugged the holes. And on any gear pump I've ever seen, if you did that and you had a good pump, you would start feeling resistance in that shaft. This thing here, you can plug these holes off with your fingers and turn that and never feel any resistance to it at all. So I, I got a pump coming, a transfer pump. So what I'm getting at, guys, I think the initial problem with this thing and what was actually probably causing the P0094 code was more than likely that transfer pump. When we found out that it had a bad cam in it, I had my wife come down and I thought, you know, there's no sense in uh, getting this pumping units back in it and getting it started and getting in here. We'll just kind of drag it into the shop with the forklift and air it up. I guarantee you, I think if I would have tried to put those pumping units back in, sitting out there in the parking lot, I think I would have been in the same predicament I am right now. I think I would have never got it started. I think the system had a prime on it, initial prime on the system, and once I broke that loose and I lost that prime, I don't think it would have ever restarted. I don't know, guys. We're going to try the transfer pump and then uh, see what happens. It's supposed to be in in about another hour. Uh, I mean, I've cranked on that thing, and I've got 40 pounds of oil pressure with it cranking. So I know that I have the system primed pretty damn good with engine oil. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put the air cleaner and stuff back in it um, and try to button it up. I think once I get, I, I really think that if I get this transfer pump, uh, I think it's going to probably fire up. I really do. So um, anyways, I'll, I'll be back here in a minute when we're putting that pump in and 
we'll see what happens. And something else I wanted to show you guys is look at the fuel filters that came out of that thing. Look at their, their black. I mean, they are just absolutely restricted. That's the one out of the, the primary. This is the secondary one. Look, it's even worse. It really makes you wonder what he's got in his tank, you know? So I thought I'd show you that, guys. That's pretty wild. Well, guys, this is kind of turning out like that damn Detroit did. I cannot, I cannot. I'm just so frustrated, guys. So frustrated right now. I've been on the phone with guys from PACAR, and nobody has a clue what to do with this thing. You can squirt a little ether in there, and it's, it just acts like it's a fuel problem. So, to, it's not the lift pump. It's obviously, I had, I was just cranking on it, guys, and I had, I had the measured fuel pressure here. This is the low side fuel pressure. I had it up to 25 PSI cranking on it, and I never could. It took a long time for it to get to 25 PSI. But I never could. And so here's here's other things. I mean I've 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 went down this road too here. These guys say pull this check ball out of this filter element. I pulled the check ball out of there, like they said, and then I tried to bleed the system, and I never could get fuel out this bleeder port with that check ball out. So I stuck the check ball back in it and now I've got fuel coming out of there. With that check ball out, I could never get fuel out of the return line. And this priming pump is it's 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 nice and solid. I mean, I even took my mighty vac and put a vacuum on the system. I even took an electric fuel pump and I put it on this CompuCheck port to force the fuel and force the air out of it. And I still, the cam and the crank is synchronizing. That means the cam and crank are in time. What in the hell? The only other thing I can think, is it a compression issue? It's got new pistons and rings and everything in it. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm whining, but I'm just so fucking frustrated right now. I can't tell you how f I've been on this, trying to get it started for three fucking days now. And I can't get it to run. It's, it's to me almost like the, like the ECM has just took a shit. It's just not pulsing the injectors. You can squirt a little ether in the intake and it'll fire. So, I'm waiting for this thing. I was going to show you guys what, you know, it's a typical PACR starter lockout horse shit. Yeah, power reduced. Yeah. Where's the starter lockout? Oh, it's back active again. So, let's go over here. So let's look at the So watch my rail pressure guys Watch how my rail pressure goes higher than my desired Right there This is actual And the one below that is desired Okay, I don't like that. That to me that's telling me there's a leak somewhere in the system and the pumping units are overcompensating for the leak. Okay, so let's go over here and I'll show you the I'll go show you the uh cam sensor if I can find it. Engine mode on protection of cars, but good heater, brake, parking brake, stop switch on. Stop switch on. What's that mean, guys? What's stop switch on mean? Does that mean what if I go to crank? What's stop switch on? What is that, guys? What the fuck is that? There's not some button in here or something. What the hell's that all about? Stop switch on.
stop switch off. What's this right here? That's just a cruise. That's all that is. Okay. That's just a cruise control. Okay, let me find the cam sensor. VMAX application. Not even sure what the hell that means. Camshaft signal. Okay, it says right now. It says right now. It says not synchronized. Okay, watch that. As soon as I go to crank. Synchronized. And you'll notice that the duty cycle on the common rail pumps are way low, which means it's moving a lot of fuel. Is there, what's the correction value? It's like a negative 17%. But here's what bothers me. Watch how slow this measured fuel pressure, that's the low side fuel pressure. Look how slow it comes up. I don't I don't understand that it's it just seems like it's way too slow and and I've sucked right out of a bucket guys I've sucked directly right out of a bucket and didn't make any difference at all no difference okay folks I want to update you uh, so here's the deal so far it's looking like I've been chasing this problem for three or four days now for a cam sensor that's not throwing a code so here's the deal you're going to have three wires on this thing you're going to have signal wire that's going to tell you what either the camshaft is turning or the crankshaft is turning you're going to have sensor ground you're going to have a shielding wire well so what i did i went and chased down the snap-on guy this morning and bought me a I haven't had a, I used to have a uh, a real nice push button switch like this, but I couldn't, I think I know what happened to it uh, when all my stuff got stolen down south. It disappeared with that. That's what happened. And I never did get another one. And I thought, man, I really need a push button. So anyway, I, uh, I uh, tracked him down and bought that push button switch. And then I went and got this from him as well. This is the uh, really nice kit because nobody in Klamath Falls had this kind of stuff. This is what I really needed. I really needed something like a T-pin. This style here that you can, you know, you can, this will screw down. Let me see if I can get you over here and I'll show you. But see, this will screw down and this moves back and forth, but you'll have a little little pin in there and that'll just pierce that insulation to where you can probe that wire so what i did is i took this and i went to the crankshaft or the camshaft signal wire which is pin 53 on this connector and then i cranked on it and i had zero volts now here's what's really screwed up is when you're cranking on that thing that damn thing says it's synchronized on the laptop and it's lying to you if there's zero volts on there, there's no way that son of a bitch is synchronized. So, so I, I checked my wires from there on all three pins, the sensor ground, the signal, and the uh, 
The, uh... Hold on, guys. I gotta call. I gotta answer this. Anyways, uh... So, guys, um... Fucking telemarketers. Anyways, all the wires from there to that cam sensor are fine. Nothing wrong with them. Okay, so then I thought, you know what? Just to verify that I'm hooking things up correctly and everything, I actually went to pin 56, which is the crankshaft, because it's registering RPM in the cab and on the laptop when you crank it. It'll spin up to around 170 RPM when you're cranking on it. So I went to this pin 56, that's the signal wire for the crankshaft, and peak-to-peak -peak voltage, it's reading. So if you go in here, I'll show you on the laptop, but... I'll tell you what, man, this kit here, I should have bought this a long time ago. It's a really nice kit. It comes with these different T-pin. You can go like that and hook a wire like that and then run your lead into it here and test wires. I mean, that's that's as much wiring as I do. I should have had I should have had something like this a long time ago. But it comes with all these adapters, come with the alligators, uh, little clamps here, comes with all these different probes. So really, really handy, really handy deal there. So anyways, uh, I'll show you here what I'm looking at. I've got this thing called uh, Mitchell One, and I actually have the actual Packar service manual on it too, and they both, and, and I do that. The reason I do that is sometimes aftermarket <laughs> service literature isn't correct, so it's nice to verify. So this is the Mitchell One, which is Pro Demand. And so if you're checking the AC voltage coming out of the signal, it says right here, one to two volts. Now, more than one volt denotes peak to peak voltage because it's not going to be a constant voltage as that tone wheel is going around. There's gaps in the tone wheel, so you're going to have a variance in voltage there. This is where an oscilloscope would be nice, but I still don't have one. But anyways... This one was reading around one volt when I was cranking on it, peak to peak voltage. So the 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 um, uh, camshaft sensor. Let's go over here. I'll show you. Uh, let's go back, and I go to. I'll show you here. That's just so you know. And I sure, you know, it's not reading any voltage. I'm I'm just about 100% sure the cam sensor's not reading anything. Uh, where should be cam sensor? There we go. And we go over here to test procedures. Okay, so pin 54 is the ground, uh, pin 53 is the signal. And this one here is 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.8 volts. 0. 0.5 denotes peak to peak voltage. So I it it read zero the entire time, never moved one digit. So it's obviously not reading anything on the cam sensor, which is kind of weird. I mean, because I checked sensor resistance is in spec, but I, I don't know. It's it's not reading anything, and you can't swap the cam and crank because they're two different part numbers. They had to make them different so they could screw you up there. And the cam sensor won't be in till tomorrow. So, uh, with all cam sensor, I don't know if I bumped it or I don't know what happened, guys. I don't know if I bumped it when I put the bell housing on and I took the cam sensor out. I looked, I looked down in the hole and the tone wheels right underneath it. So I, I don't know why it's, I don't know. It's kind of weird. So anyways, I think we're on the right track now, and I'll keep you updated.